This episode of Analog Resurgence is brought to you by Squarespace. Use the link in the description of this video or the code Analog Resurgence to get 10% off your first purchase at Squarespace. Right before Polaroid brought out their ever popular SX70 camera in 1972, most Polaroid cameras looked like these and took pack film. Pack film is gone, mostly. I mean, there's the one instant stuff, but it's pretty expensive and it pales in comparison to true pack film of the past. That incredibly cool instant film format where you pulled the picture out of the camera, waited a minute or two, and then peeled it apart to reveal your image. Out of all those different pack film cameras, many of which just kind of looked the same, there was one that really stood out. The Polaroid Big Shot, a ridiculous looking hunk of plastic that still has its fans all these years later. I've already covered pack film in a variety of videos from over the last couple of years, but here's the important thing about the format. Fresh pack film isn't in production anymore. Polaroid killed it in the early 2000s and aren't bringing it back. Fuji made great pack film, including FP100C and FP3000B, but that's gone now too, and you shell out a lot for expired packs that might not work anymore. One Instant is trying their best to make a type of pack film, but it's designed differently, and it's super inconsistent, and the color stuff is also being made out of old material. So all these pack film cameras aren't the most prized possessions in the world at this point. But the Big Shot is worth taking a look at because it's just a bit of an oddity. The Polaroid Big Shot is a pack film portrait camera and it's meant for taking portraits of people. The Big Shot was designed at Polaroid by Bruce Johnson and Bill Shelton and released in 1971. It was only in production for a short time until 1972, after which the Integral film came out, along with cameras like the SX-70 and then eventually the 600s and the Spectras. It's a very limited camera. The Big Shot is entirely plastic with a 220 millimeter plastic lens that has an aperture of f29. On the back there's a one minute timer and originally a handle, but the one on mine broke off. Inside is where the pack film was loaded and it's just the same as all the other pack film cameras. The red shutter button is located on the side of the camera and below that is just a plastic peg. Firing the shutter on this thing is a bit of like a pinching motion where you use the peg to help balance the camera. On the side of the camera is a rangefinder for focusing this monstrosity. It's awkward. The camera has a fixed focus of about four or five feet, and you have to move around until the two images in the viewfinder line up for the image to be in focus. As I was doing research on the Big Shot, I kept seeing people refer to the focusing method as the Big Shot Shuffle. And I can't help but wonder if people ever actually called it that, or if somebody wrote it down once and then it just got copy pasted across a variety of websites over the years. A very important part of the Big Shot is the flash. The camera requires a magic cube flash that mounts on top behind a diffuser screen. Magic cubes are old single-use flash bulbs that would pop when the shutter is fired and create a flash. Each cube has four flashes and as you fire the shutter the flash will fire and then the cube rotates to the next flash. Magic cubes and flash cubes are also two slightly different things. They look very similar but the bottom is different so flash cubes won't mount on the big shot only magic cubes will. The magic cubes aren't being made anymore either so if you're tracking down some pack film be sure to try and track down uh, some of these as well while you're at it if you're going to use the big Shot. The Big Shot is intended for use only with the lower ISO pack films of 75 or 100. Originally things like Type 100 Polaroid pack films worked, but it also works great with Fuji's FP100C. It's not going to go well with the higher ISO pack films. There were 400 ISO pack films, but also things like FP3000B are not going to be good for it. The images that I've taken on the Big Shot come from a couple of 2018 expired packs of FP100C that had been in my fridge since I purchased them back around 2016, 2017. It's a fun camera to use and carry around and pull out for people's pictures, but one that's becoming less and less useful as pack film becomes more and more expired. The images are very bright with the flash and also have a bit of a softness to them because of the single element plastic lens and also how tricky focusing can be sometimes so things end up maybe just not super in focus. For the most part, I think it's a good look because of the focal length and how the diffuser softens the flash and also because it's just a little rough around the edges. The flash captures things really well and then falls off very quickly so that the background is darker and your subject really stands out. I like the look when it works, but having a flash not fire is pretty upsetting now because of how precious pack film is. I had a cube or two not work on me before, and even outside in bright sunlight things are dark. Also I'm pretty sure the 
Big Shot originally came with the film spreaders in the film compartment instead of the better film rollers from other pack film cameras. But I've just swapped mine out because the rollers are always better. You can also just use the Big Shot for shooting subjects that aren't portraits because it's just like a close up photo. These shots of flowers work fine for doing with the Big Shot, even though it's not the most like convenient camera to use. It still gives the camera a purpose if you don't have people around to take pictures of. Using the magic cubes always give the best results, but the camera does have an exposure dial on the lens like you find on most Polaroid cameras. It's just a little bit of an exposure compensation dial. Outside in full sunlight with some 100 ISO pack film, this is the result with the dial turned all the way to brighten. You can see it's okay, but it's still pretty dark. Compare that with a shot using the flash, and you can see that the subject is just lit so much better and stands out from the background. Even though the Magic Cubes haven't been made in years, there are some alternatives possibly to that specific hurdle of using the Big Shot. I've seen a few different hacks for adapting this to a proper flash as opposed to a single use one, but it just might not look as good as it does when you're using the actual Magic Cubes. That doesn't change the fact that the film itself isn't easy to get anymore, and because of that, I think that probably the Big Shot is not everybody's first choice when it comes to using those precious remaining film packs that they might have. I would say that if you happen to have some packs of FP100C stored in your fridge, then it's maybe worth it to put a pack through the Big Shot just while well, you still can. But it's really going to depend on like how interested you are in doing portraits or close-up photos on a plastic camera. And on top of that, the Big Shot can still easily go for 50 to over $100 online when I took a look at them. So it's not the most appealing if you're picking it up just to use once. You can also do portraits with something like a pack film back for a 4x5 camera instead of buying a Big Shot just for this sort of thing. And the results will probably be more consistent and better on a higher quality camera like that. The appeal specifically of the Big Shot is really in how absurd it looks and also how fun it is to just pull it out for taking someone's picture. If you do want to show out for it though, the Big Shot can be used with the one instant color pack film. The color stuff has been sold out for a while though, and I'm not sure how frequently they make batches of it and exactly when it will be back in stock. I actually have some of that stuff left over from when I did a video on it in 2020, and I was going to put a shot through the Big Shot just for this video, but uh, it, it just didn't work at all. Like nothing came out, a little, little bit of chemical. Um, so unfortunately, that's just one of the risks that you run with that film. And it clearly just doesn't age well at all. They do make some black and white film that's supposed to be better, but it is 400 ISO, so it's not really meant to work with the Big Shot, but I'm sure if you play around with the exposure dial, you could get okay results. It is still crazy expensive just for three shots, so I'm gonna leave that up to you. Now, of course, I can't talk about the Big Shot without mentioning that yes, Andy Warhol did love this camera. He took a lot of pictures of people on it back in the 70s and the 80s. Warhol would take these portraits of like celebrities and models and then make really big silkscreen prints of them that would sell, of course, for thousands of dollars. All he was using was this big, chunky plastic camera. Farrah Fawcett, Mick Jagger, John Lennon, Schwarzenegger, Carly Simon, Muhammad Ali. They're really cool to see and it probably definitely made the Big Shot more popular than it would have been otherwise. This awkward camera that was around only for a year or two right before Polaroid put out their integral film and the SX-70 camera, is just something that could have been like a camera that time forgot. More recently, photographer Lucas Michael used the Big Shot to capture events like the Golden Globe winners in 2014. There's also the book Big Shots, Polaroids from the World of Hip Hop and Fashion by Philip Leeds. So you can kind of go through all that stuff to just see the different people that this camera has captured from over the years. I couldn't find a lot of people who are like working to modify this camera specifically. I'm sure you could take an Instax wide shot in the dark and put it in the camera and then go out and take the picture and then go back into the dark and put that Instax wide shot back into an Instax pack and then into a camera and then eject it in the Instax camera. But that's just a lot of hassle for using the Big Shot. Ultimately, as time moves forward, not every camera that's out there is gonna be able to be used the way it was intended to be. I do love the Big Shot for how wacky it is and also for the style of pictures that it's able to take. But I think at this point, there might be more people out there who are looking to buy it as collectors then there are people looking to buy it with the intention of actually shooting with it. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, um, right. Uh, kind of in the middle of something, but yeah. Listen, you wanna make a website? 
on the internet, like an internet website, like one of those old school internet websites, then you gotta check out Squarespace, damn it. It's the easiest place to be able to make a website. Templates that are really easy to use. You don't need to know all the technical know-how coding stuff that in the past you definitely would have had to. It's not the early internet anymore. It's the mid to late stage internet, depending on how long, um, the internet is around for. Squarespace is easy to use, they have great support, and it allows you to make whatever kind of internet website that you wanna make on the internet, online, using Squarespace. Use the link in the description of this video or use the code Analog Resurgence at checkout in order to get 10% off your first purchase at Squarespace. Thank you so much for checking this out. And uh, you can find information down in the description below for how to support the channel through things like merch that I have available, as well as a Patreon that helps me to have a little bit more money to throw at making film related videos. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I've had the big shot for a little while now and I wish I could shoot more with it, but pack film is just so precious that it's hard to kind of want to pull it out and be a little frivolous with it because it just feels like, Everything has to mean so much when you finally shoot one of those packs. Also, magic cubes are not around, and I went through the last couple of magic cubes that I had when I was shooting pictures for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.